Camden Yards, a baseball haven where no seat is a bad one and its beauty is rivaled by few. Take a stroll around Utah Street and soak it all in. Even the terrible baseball on display inside. Not too many people in Baltimore are, I don't blame them. Their loss is your gain. Incredibly cheap tickets as your reward. Capitalize on this bounty with SeatGeek, an app that helps to sort the many tickets on the resale market at events like these. It sorts all tickets from red to green on a 1 to 100 scale and lets you get a view from where you'll be sitting, but every seat is a good one. In fact, use the code word TREE in the link below and save $20 off of your first purchase. You'll feel like Manny Machado once he gets traded to a real team. All thanks to the power of SeatGeek. And now for our feature presentation. Let's sit by the campfire and allow me to regale you in a personal story. I took a little trip up to Baltimore this past May. I know, willingly going to Baltimore is a little crazy, but I have a sadistic streak in me. While I was in town, I took in the sights and sounds of an Orioles game. An easy excuse to see Camden Yards and be awed at how beautiful it is. This is where all of the positives end. You see, children, I ended up going to that game. If you're an Orioles fan, you know which one I'm talking about. The game where Dylan Bundy nearly set records for ineptitude. The game where Bundy was serving up so many cookies you'd think it was a bake sale. No outs, four home runs given up. This is apparently Baltimore's best pitcher. The whole game was a massacre. And it epitomizes the Orioles organization today. A goddamn mess that gets battered around yet pretends like everything is fine. I've been on record saying that I have no idea what the hell the Orioles are doing. They struck me as a team whose window closed pretty tightly last season after their pitching decided to imitate the home run derby. They responded to this disappointment by inexplicably buying at the deadline. Several months into the season, I still have no idea what they're doing. It's not even that they're mediocre, they are the equivalent of shitting on a baseball diamond, putting on a cheap Orioles flag and selling it at their gift shop on Utah Street. All of that bargain bin hunting and posturing for a playoff spot leaves them with revving up the tank so loudly that even the fucking White Sox are jealous of their efficiency. I didn't know that 127th trimester abortions were allowed, but if they were, the Orioles would be an example of one. If I were to pick a point which emphasizes their thinking, it would be this. Buck Showalter, my old veteran son. Extra innings of the AL wildcard game are upon us. Toronto is lining up some of their best bats in the bottom of the 11th. You have a choice in front of you, sir. Do you choose the White Hot Closer who is a Cy Young candidate and will all but lock down this half inning? Or do you go for the mystery box and choose an Ubaldo Jimenez who hasn't been any good in almost five years? Choose wisely, sit you picked a minute. No, I still cannot tell you what was going through his mind when he did that. To me, this is as bad as Grady Little keeping Pedro in the game. I don't care how good the Orioles did that season, that sort of mistake with the year on the line should have gotten him fired. But alas, Baltimore didn't overreact and Walter is still here. Acting like the calendar year is still 2014 and he has a great bunch of guys who are this close to breaking through. I'd like the optimistic drugs he is on, please. This is Baltimore's situation in a nutshell. Here is the obvious choice. Blow it up and rebuild it, you can't compete with the big boys anymore. Or the mystery box of pretending that you're still competitive with what you have. They have hypothetically picked Jimenez every single time. It's not going to fix that total ineptitude on offense. Let's take out our binoculars and see what we can find. Well, it appears to be Manny Machado near single-handedly carrying a bunch of atrophying refuse before his legs collapse on him. We can only wish he is traded to a real team soon enough. May we visit Exhibit A in this train wreck in Chris Davis. Oh boy. To think that this was the guy that had Peter Angelos break the narrative and throw shitloads of money at. It was a victory for Baltimore. They got their guy. Sure, it had massive risk. The home run was becoming a more common commodity and power hitting first baseman can have a brutally unforgiving decline. But Chris Davis is the face to bring asses to the seats. The only thing on its ass is Chris's playing ability. The worst case scenario hasn't just happened, it's in its nuclear winter. Chris Davis is well on his way to having the worst season ever recorded by a position player. That is not an exaggeration. He can't feel. He can't make contact. When he does, it's mostly harmless ground balls. He fails with runners on base. He fails with nobody on base. He's a power hitter being outslugged by pitchers. His only proficiency is in whipping. He's always been a strikeout king, and it's the only thing that's remained with him this season. They are paying him $21 million to do this. 
Is it any wonder why Jim Palmer threw him into an open fire on live television? Of course he's hurt by it. Nobody wants to have reality rubbed in their faces, but here's a reality that needs to be. He's not even halfway into this contract. I can't wait for the revival of Bobby Bonilla Day in 20 years' time. But it's not just him. Most of their top guys have blown up in their faces. Mark Trumbo had an outstanding bounce-back season with the club a few years ago. He gets a hearty extension and goes back to being a strikeout magnet who still can't play defense. Jonathan Scope had an all-star caliber year last season. You know what happens if I'm talking about him. He gets injured and proceeds to regress dramatically to the point where you have to question whether or not they tender him in the offseason. That rock-solid closer Zach Britton, injured. Hasn't played a game until mid-June. Speaking of injuries, Darren O'Day has had a ton of them too. And then there's that grand old pitching core. There's Kevin Gossman getting owned on the base paths by Mookie Betts because of a predictable windup. And there's Chris Tillman, once a beacon of light for the organization. And he sucks. Remember that they added to it in the offseason with Andrew Kashner and Alex Cobb. Somehow, unsurprisingly, they have sucked both life and money out of the organization. Now I know what they mean when Dylan Bundy is their best pitcher. The guy that nearly set records for ineptitude is their best pitcher. Disgusting. But do you know what this team needs? Some more dumpster diving! They need to supplement this squad with a bunch of random cast-offs and Rule 5 picks. It's been a Baltimore tradition for as long as we can remember. Let's start with a minor league invite to Danny Valencia, who is now their starting third baseman. Pedro Alvarez, though, he is the minor league free agent we need. He is their third string DH that can't make contact with the ball. Did I also mention he can't field worth a damn? Colby Rasmus, he vanished last season, but he won't do that off the field. He'll vanish on it this time. Doesn't matter though, they need more veterans to appease old buck. Go grab Craig Gentry and Jace Peterson to waste roster spots. They'll find the next Nelson Cruz somewhere. But we can't pretend to just throw a team out there. We need to develop for the future. Let type Anthony Santander and Pedro Araujo as developmental pieces via the Rule 5. And and they sell. It's the one thing I don't get about this organization. They put so much attention to detail in Camden Yards, yet they treat their baseball operations with half-assed pretenses of competing while all evidence points to the contrary. This organization cannot develop pitching. Being drafted as a pitcher into this organization is a death sentence that can only be nullified if he is sent to a real team. We all know about Jake Arrieta, who became a stud once he was let go from hell, but there are plenty more. For one, the Arietta trade also gave the Cubs Pedro Strope. There is Eduardo Rodriguez, a former top prospect who got it all together once going to Boston for a rental of Andrew Miller. This organization also traded away Josh Hader, the same bullpen rock that is setting the strikeout pace for relievers. Jeremy Hellickson was utter trash when he was traded for last season. This year, he is one of many excellent starters about an hour down the road. If it's one guy, eh, it happens everywhere. If it's a couple, just bad luck. If it's happening to nearly every pitcher on the roster, that's a trend. This is the Orioles, a team that just doesn't care anymore. Dan Duquette will pretend that he knows what he's doing, but he doesn't. He has as much of a clue as the rest of us do. Zilch. Peter Angelos, the notorious meddler and lightning rod, is as apathetic towards this team as anyone else. He's passed down power to his sons, Duquette and Brady Anderson. They have proceeded to putz around and flounder. At the very least, Showalter might have been long gone if Peter gave a fuck anymore. The fans have responded the same way. A once bustling, beautiful ballpark is now a cavern of desolation. What is there to see besides Machado? He'll be gone in a little bit, so might as well see him now. Most of the promotional tactics and offerings at Orioles games are reaching please come to our games territory. Free entry for kids? Offer that as an alternative for truancy and you will see Baltimore's education system rocket through the roof. Why would anyone watch this? This team is a zombie. They merely drift around aimlessly, grasping at anything that comes near them. Nothing is being done. Nobody is being held accountable. They just reminisce about 1983 and call it a day. And they want to apparently add to this mess with Hanley Ramirez? The fuck is that gonna do? Past Prime Hanley isn't going to get you to the playoffs. Fuck, it won't even get you to 500. If you're lucky, you'll get a random minor leaguer at the deadline. Keep pretending that you're still contenders. Because guess what happens? 
in the offseason. Manny Machado, the only reason why you're relevant, is a free agent and wants to play for a contender. He gone. Adam Jones is a free agent, too. A face of the franchise, but I doubt Baltimore wants another potential Chris Davis on their hands. He gone. Zach Britton is also a free agent. He is a Scott Boras client, which means he's going to test free agency and Baltimore isn't keeping him without a massive overpayment. He gone. I only wish they'd stop wasting the talents of Gary Thorne and let him announce hockey games again, but I can only wish for so much. Orioles, let me put this to you in terms you'll understand. You are done. This reality has been staring you in the face since last season, but you've chosen to avoid it. The longer you stay the course, the more fucked you'll be for the inevitable rebuild. I expect you'll continue to keep your heads in the sand and do nothing, but one could be surprised. Just chuck the goddamn team into the Chesapeake and be done with it. Router to third, fair ball. Moustak is across. And 29 years of frustration have ended. The Royals are going to the World Series.